to everyone for uh, joining us here today. Uh, I appreciate that, uh, you know, here at uh, the Admiral's webinars, uh, we have a wide range of experience here in the room. Some people complete beginners, some people have been training for a good while. There's gonna be plenty today, all right, to uh, sort of uh, uh, satiate uh, everybody's uh, appetite. I, uh, I believe this is the first part of a two-part series. Um, uh, and hopefully that will also uh, be able to give you plenty to take away to think about and utilize in your uh, own trading. Uh, also realize that, you know, this, these are the English speaking webinars and uh, admirals, we have a global audience here. So uh, wherever you are joining us from in the world, we hear from admirals, we wish you well, we hope you're having a, a good year and being able to navigate this uh, rather uh, eventful 20 22. Uh, uh, those of you joining us here today, okay, great to have you uh, here. You can put your questions into the, uh, the chat box. If you're watching this later on demand on the Admiral's YouTube channel, then fabulous that uh, you're joining us. Uh, by all means, okay, you can put questions in the comment box. Make sure you subscribe to the Admiral's uh, channel uh, and you can also give us, you know, thumbs up or even a thumbs down. We don't mind. We appreciate all of the feedback. Uh, talking of feedback, at the end of this session, you will receive a, uh, a quick uh, feedback report, okay? We'll just take you 30 seconds to fill in. We'd really appreciate if you could just take the moment just to, to fill that in. Also gives you the opportunity to put down any ideas or thoughts you might have about future sessions that you'd like myself or my colleagues to, to run. Uh, we're very happy to take that on board. We want to make these sessions as, uh, as beneficial and helpful as we possibly can um, for you. So uh, without further ado, let's dig in. Uh, Mr. Van Buren, you're very welcome. Very welcome here. Everybody's uh, welcome. Great to see you all as, uh, as, uh, as always. Really enjoy doing these particular sessions. So uh, just bear with me a moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up our uh, particular slides for today's session. So just bear with a second. There we go. Excellent. Fabulous. Fabulous, just move this around here, okay? So uh, great, hope, as I said, hope you can uh, hope you can hear me, hope you can see me, hope you can actually see the uh, slides. If you can, you can let us know, that, um, that's uh, absolutely uh, uh, fabulous. And um, uh, as always, as I said, we're gonna talk about a very simple trading setup in part one, um, about trading the, the bounce off the 50 period moving average. And, um, you know, I'm a great believer in very simple trading tactics. Right, uh, I believe that that actually, especially for new traders, is what can help them a great deal. Very often, uh, uh, traders, uh, you know, uh, and I have been guilty of this myself in the past, is that sometimes we overcomplicate. All right, we overcomplicate the the tactics or strategies. We think we need to add more and more layers to make it. Uh, a, a better trading tactic and actually very often that is not the case sometimes you can just have a couple a very simple set of rules with filters and that actually will help you better okay it allows you to make your decisions easier so we're going to talk about that in terms of uh, trading the, the the 50 ma bands uh, vincenzo uh, great to have you here okay always a pleasure to, to see you all very welcome okay got a good uh, um, turnout today it would be useful to, for me to know here, those of you who've joined us here today for today's session, you know, uh, what has been your experience of trading bounces off moving averages? Is it something that you do yourself? Is it something that, you know, you're completely new and you've never heard about, you know, or is it something that, you know, it, it sort of is already part of your existing trade plan? Uh, any kind of ideas or thoughts, please put them in the chat box. It's uh, it's good for me as well to understand and know kind of you know who we are who we have in the room here with us today. So remember, we're Admiral K, a forex and CFD broker with a wide range of instruments, uh, with global presence and local support, um, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and giving you opportunities to engage with markets using both MT4 and MT5. If you have any questions about Admirals, get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help. Uh, and just a little bit of uh, updated Admirals news is that also what we're seeing is we're getting you know, a squash on spreads, okay? Squ spreads are getting uh, smaller and uh, tighter, but also and probably what's also very uh, useful for traders is the uh, kind of size, position size is being reduced for uh, many of the uh, the major indices that just opens up you know a whole host of new trading instruments for for many traders 
Uh, and as always, I will always say, you know, uh, uh, you know, be sure to subscribe to the Admiral's YouTube uh, channel there at Admiral's uh, Global. You'll find this uh, this video will go on there. Okay, we'll also be recorded, be uploaded there, so you can watch these sessions again and again. Uh, and you'll find a wide and broad range of videos on there from uh, from the Admiral's team and from my colleagues covering all sorts of uh, trading topics. So. Let's have a little chat about what we're going to cover and talk about today. Uh, firstly, not unsurprisingly, because I appreciate that uh, you know we have a, a wide range of people here in the troop. I'll talk about really you know what is the moving average and what is the fifty period moving average. Uh, you know, talk about you know how do we use it for uh, trading. Uh, and today, what we're going to focus on how could we utilize it just to build a very simple stock trading plan. Okay, just very simple like that. And if there is time at the end, we'll have a look at uh, live markets. We'll see how that's uh, we'll see how that's going. So you know, be sure to stay with us till the very uh, end. So uh, Andres says, "Hi Paul, uh, great. You're very welcome, Andres. Okay, you know, wherever you are in the world, you're very welcome joining us to here to the session. Uh, Adira, and I apologise if I've uh, pronounced you wrong. This is I haven't tried it before. Well, that's what these sessions are for, Adira. Okay, to, to give you a little bit of insight, a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of experience. Okay, sharing my own." With you about how to utilize the you know all these many different uh, uh, indicators and tools and resources that are there not only on the MetaTrader platform but also you know across the whole of uh, uh, admirals themselves to to help you you know be the best trader that you can be. So for those who don't know me, my name is Paul. I've traded for uh, many years now, having traded for funds and clients. Okay, primarily I like to focus on trading FX indices and commodities for myself. Uh, for my longer term trading, I'm a trend trader, and for my shorter term trader, I'm an intraday kind of mean reversion and reversal trader. But mostly what we're going to talk about today is trading the market with the uh, uh, 50 period moving average. So uh, Anthony says, is only stock trading we are interested in? Uh, no, well, as I said, this is going to be a two part um, session here. Okay, uh, today's session uh, I'll share with you the idea, okay, you know, the, the tactic, but we'll look at it focusing on utilizing on stocks, primarily mostly US stocks. But what you'll find is actually what I'll share with you is pretty applicable to any kind of instrument. So, uh, um, you know, what we will do, as I said, today's session, we'll focus on basically just looking at it on uh, uh, US stocks um, and also on being bullish on long on uh, US stocks, okay? Uh, and also what we'll do is in part two, what we'll do is we'll focus on, you know, the other side of it, okay, about going short, okay, using the 50 period moving average, and also trading other asset classes, so FX, indices, commodities, okay, cryptos, etc. So, you know, I'm trying to cover as much as I can, all right, in these uh, in these two particular sessions. But um, as the uh, good question, of Anthony, uh, thank you, thank you for that. Um, uh, but as the slide says, for many new traders, moving averages are a very simple and popular indicator. Why are they popular? Well, we'll take a little look at why over the next couple of slides. However, what we find is many new traders will use them inefficiently in their trading. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, once again, I'm going to explain that over the next couple of slides. What we're going to do today in part one is, all right, we'll take a bit of a deep dive into trading long, okay, being bullish, and trading stocks around the basics of a simple plan right about the moving average trading plan based around the 50 period moving average uh, and as i just said earlier in part two what we'll do is we'll focus on going short right and trading other asset classes so i just thought <clears throat> rather than try to cover all in one easier to do two sessions one on stocks and going long okay and the second one which actually might be more relevant more useful to many traders is about going short based upon what markets are like at the moment and also trading other asset classes. So FX, indices, commodities, crypto, et cetera, all of which are available on the uh, Admiral's platforms. So that's what we're running to uh, today, a two part. Today we'll focus on going long and we'll focus on stocks. So let's start with having a, taking a little bit of a look at moving average. What you'll find is many traders will start their trading journey beginning with using moving average indicators. But why is that? What is it that makes them very popular? Well, for starters, they're popular because they're a visual trading tool, all right? And still today, most traders are male, and most males are driven by visual cues. 
and you can read what you want into that, ladies uh, and uh, gentlemen. But, you know, it, it is, it's a visual trading tool, it's a simple trading tool. And what it also allows traders to do is it allows traders to view smoothed out data, okay? Janice says, good afternoon. You're very welcome, Janice. Great to see you here, okay? Uh, great to see everybody here, okay? Wherever you are in the world, fabulous to see you here, join us. So moving average is a very simple tool, very simple visual tool that uh, traders like to uh, utilize. You know, and if you don't know what moving average is, well, it, basically what it's doing here, this little chart is a 10 period moving average. What it's actually doing is that every time a candle or a bar closes, what it will do in on a 10 period moving average is it will take the last 10 closes, add them up, take uh, an average and plot that. And what that you can see that do is, is you know, that just plots a very, you know, a, a smoothed out data line, okay, on your particular chart. And the, the, the bigger the number, Okay, the, the less responsive it is. So a 10 period moving average is taking just the last 10 bits of data. Okay, a 200 period moving average is taking the last 200 closes. All right, and, and invariably will not be as responsive because the data used in it is much larger. So it's just about understanding that. And we'll go, we'll go into that in a couple of slides time about what that actually means and how we can utilize that uh, for you. So um, uh, Anthony says the uh, the audio is not clear. I, I think everybody else can hear Anthony. You might just want to uh, you might just want to check that. Uh, what I will do though is I will I will turn up my uh, volume as well a little bit just to to, to help. But it should be uh, it should be okay. So what moving averages are also very useful for, especially for new traders, is that they can be useful for helping gauge the direction, the momentum, and the strength of the trend those are things that start to become useful and of interest to us you know especially for new traders okay maybe new traders who don't have uh, maybe the experience of price action maybe they don't have for the confidence and self-belief so they're looking for cues that will actually help just confirm their analysis that you know that instrument is in a trend or right? maybe it's going up maybe it's going down maybe it's just range bound you know that's what we want to be able to do remember as traders you know, what I can and you hear me say this all the time is that, you know, as I said at the start, we can sometimes overcomplicate things. And actually what we want to do is just bring it small, make it easy, and just be able to make one simple decision. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Am I going to sit in my hands and do nothing? Okay, that's it. When we boil it down, that is where we're, that's where we're getting to. And what we're looking for is a way, a simple way to make that decision. All right, a simple way to make that choice so that we know what we need to do next. Because it's very easy, especially when you're a new trader, we were all there, we've all had to start somewhere. It's like, you know, you're looking at charts, it's very easy to get confused, very easy to have far too many indicators, far too much going on. It's very easy to get over, you know, your analysis paralysis because you're overwhelmed because there's so much data. There's actually just some simple moving averages can help you just identify the direction, the momentum and the strength of trend, and that is enough for us to start making decisions on what we want to do next. So uh, um, Anthony's talking about explaining the difference between direction and trend. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, direction, well, you know, ideally what we want to be able to do is to identify, you know, it, it, is, that, is that going, is, is it going up? Is it bullish? Is it going down? Is it bearish or is it going sideways? And in terms of the strength of the trend, well, a lot of that can be actually uh, understood by A, how quick the price action is uh, maneuvering, but also where that price action is in relation to the moving averages. And that's probably something I can explain a little bit easier when we actually look at a couple of charts. So if you'll bear with me, Anthony, we're gonna look at a few charts in a bit and I'll be able to utilize that to help show you exactly direction and strength of trend. Good question though, very good question. So, so when it comes to kind of moving averages, uh, very often the first question is, well, what type of moving average should I use? So you might, if you're a new trader, you might sort of not know that there are actually many different types of moving averages. There really are quite a few there. Um, there are very, as I said, there are a great deal of options and there's quite a good few options on the Admiral's MetaTrader platforms. But what you will find is that for the most part, right, despite all the several options, most people work on either using what's known as an SMA, a simple moving average, or an EMA, an exponential moving average okay uh, you know and for those new traders you know what is the difference between an sma and an ema in simple terms it's 
feed. Okay, it's been. Now let me just uh, let me show and explain that term to you. So, an EMA, an exponential moving average, gives more weight to the most recent price action. Okay, so it is biased towards the most recent price action. So when price changes direction, the EMA recognizes that sooner because it's because it adds more weight to the most recent price action. However, the SMA, a simple moving average, moves slower. And what will happen is that will keep you in trades longer when you're trying to follow a trend. So in this chart here, you might be able to see it there at Clarity, is that we have what we have here. And let's bring up the old drawing tool here, Paul, is we have the dotted blue line, dotted blue line here, okay, is the 20 EMA, exponential, remember that's a bit faster, all right? as opposed to just the solid blue line, which is the 20 SMA. So what we can see here is, uh, is that, you know, for a lot, most of the time, a lot of the time, I know the trend, they're very, very closely matched. It is only when actually when the price starts to turn that we see that the 20 EMA turns across the, the 20 SMA and starts to maneuver its way up there earlier. So it's giving you a, a, an idea that the, the, the trend is changing in direction. So that's what it is. The EMA gives you faster, so it can change quicker. But in good trends, the SMA will keep you in it longer because it will invariably not be as skittish as sometimes as the EMA can be. So, and for those of you who like to have, uh, have like to have little challenges or like to have little ideas, what you can do, well, you know, the twenty EMA and the twenty SMA. You know, there are traders who will just literally trade off that particular trade idea there themselves. You might want to sort of. Uh, take that idea away and have a little look at it over the weekend, all right? So the first question is what type of uh, moving average you can use? The second question becomes what's the best period moving average for me to use? So uh, I tend to use uh, simple moving averages, SMAs, and when it comes to the best period, well, this is, as it says, it's an age old question, one that's been debated down the ages. You know, um, I will run uh, traders events in, in London and Dublin and uh, around other places. And invariably, what will happen is if, you know, if you get a lot of technical traders together, they will be talking about which is the best moving average. And there'll be people who saying, you know, the 65 period weighted moving average is best. There'll be the others saying the 34 Tom DeMarc moving average is better. Others saying, the, you know, the, the sort of 55 EMA, others saying the 50 SMA. Trust me, you could spend your life testing combinations of these, okay? You really, and, and I know lots of traders who do, okay? And if you have that ability and that skill and that inclination, by all means, you know, fill your boots, enjoy yourself. But for myself, and what I normally suggest to traders is that my suggestion is just stick to the commonly used moving averages. Why is that? Because they become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So many people looking at those commonly used moving averages, well, then, then it takes on a little bit, you know, have a little bit more weight in themselves, okay? You know, and the, the, you know, the, the will be, there will be traders who look to trade against that, but for the most part, what we're looking to do is, you know, we're just basically going to use the commonly used moving averages, as I said, because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, and hopefully over the next few slides, I'll explain a little bit more about that and how that actually comes together. So, what you will find is there are very popular moving averages. So, you know, you'll find people will use a, a 10 period moving average for short term trading, because remember, it's only got a, got a few numbers in it. Okay, so it's basically very, uh, very close to the actual price action. The 20 or 21 period moving average as a filter for the short term trend is one I particularly use. And I think, um, you know, I've, in the past, I've talked about how to use that as a, uh, as a trading tactic all of its own. The 50 period moving average, which is ideally used for the medium term trend or as a definition of what might be called fair value, okay, within, within charts and markets. And then the 100 or the 200 period moving average is used for identifying the longer term trend. And that's what you'll find. As I said, those are very popular moving averages. And as I said, you, you can go to a conference and you can read books and go on to you and people will debate, all right, till the end of time, which is the best moving average. If there's one thing you've probably heard me say many a time with trading is that there is no perfection, okay? There is no perfection in trading. It's about finding concepts, ideas, tactics that you can utilize that you're comfortable with and that you can execute flawlessly 
session after session. That is what is more important, all right? There is no perfection. You're never going to find a perfect trading tactic, all right? As much as people might tell you that it's out there, it is not, all right? It is not. It's about finding simple ideas that you can work with, that you can follow through time after time after time. That is what will make you a, a good trader. So um, what you'll see for me on my uh, on my charts, okay, I have a, a, a blue 20 period SMA, simple moving average, a red 50 period simple moving average, and a green 200 period simple moving average. Um, and this was just from last year, that was just the S&P 500. You know, um, I was talking earlier about this is a case of, you know, the, the direction, you know, it's very clear what the direction is when you were looking at this chart, wasn't it, you know, and, you know they were, uh, they were halcyon days, but also being able to show that, you know, the, the, the 20 period moving average is above the 50 period moving average, which is above the 200, you know, prices above those, that is showing you that everything is in alignment, so we have a good trend, okay, good, good, strong trend, very clear on the direction okay momentum is basically sort of taking us and we're not going to really try and fight that okay so as i said keep it nice and simple i have a blue 20 a red 50 and a green 200 on my chart as i said you can find lots and lots of people there who will you know will want to change do everything there that's fine that's what they can do what they like this is what i have just very simple just utilize that to, to get you started <clears throat> so for today's trading plan what we're going to focus on we're just going to focus on the 50 period simple moving average. We are going to use a 20 period moving average as one of our uh, filters. And for today's session, all right, for today's session, we're going to be focused on trading stocks, particularly US stocks, at, and being a buyers. Okay, so going long, right? So, you know, the, the, it's, a, it's a good session for us to understand the concepts because there's lots of people who, when they uh, like to trade stocks, they only like to trade to the long side. But I also appreciate that right at this particular moment, they, uh, that the uh, um, uh, those US markets are carrying a little bit of a pullback and a downtrend at the moment. So hence why the kind of session two will be about what we have to do when we trade shorts and what I have to do when we look at trading indices, FX, commodities, crypto, etc. So what we're going to be looking to do is because you know the markets will turn again, they always do. We're going to look to be buyers of stocks in strong trends on the daily chart. And our trigger will be a bounce off or a reclaim of, which I'll explain more, the 50 period moving average. Nice and simple. So here we go. Part one. All right. Part one is as our filter, we want to understand the overall general market. We want to ensure that we are buying in alignment with the overall market being in a trend. So how do we do this? Nice and simple. Once again, we use a weekly chart of the S&P 500. S&P 500 is the 500 biggest stocks by market capitalization in the US economy. It is the bellwether, all right, okay, for not only the US economy, but you might also say the global economy, all right? When the, when the S&P 500 is in a, in a great uptrend, the world tends to be happy. When it's not, the world isn't, all right? So today, for today's session, looking at being a buyer of stocks, we use the weekly chart of the S&P 500. We want the market to be trending up, all right? What does that mean? That means very clearly, price is above the 20 period moving average. The 20 period moving average is above the 50 period moving average. And we want the 50 period moving average to be sloping up. So at this particular time here, what we had was, it was very clear. You could see the price was in a very strong uptrend, okay? On the S&P 500 weekly chart. Hey, just one, one second, just doing that. You know what we had there with that? Okay, it's just my mouse is being a little bit, a uh, um, little bit um, belligerent. Okay, so we had, as I said, price above the twenty fifth, price above the twenty period moving average. Price is uh, the twenty period moving average is above the fifty, and the fifty is sloping up, which is remember the red fifty. So hopefully you can see that there, it's sloping up quite nicely there. No problem there with it at all that's you know that's what we're looking for and if we have that let's just use maybe it's the drawing tool here you know that 50 period moving average sloping up well then what we have is that is the overall general market okay when we are being a buyer of stocks okay session two will be about the other side okay flipping it and shorting it but this is about you know, what we're doing when we're being a buyer of stocks okay this is the filter that we particularly want to work this is the filter we want to work with 
So that's part one. You know, and that doesn't take very long to do. You know, you can do that at the start of the you know the weekend. That will take you about that'll take you about less than 60 seconds, okay, if you've got the chart set up already and you already then know what your filter is. Part two is then we're going to choose our stock, okay? And in particular, we're focusing on US stocks in terms of what we can do. But what you will find is that admirals offer a wide range of stocks, okay? Some European, some UK, some other global stocks. So, you know, whilst we're focusing on, on US stocks here, the, the, the actual overall concept and idea is, is applicable to, to, to wanting to be a buyer of any stocks in any market. So we want to uh, ensure, okay, that we're buying a stock in alignment with the overall market trend. So when the market is trending up, Okay, then we look to be a buyer. What we're looking for, okay, is we're looking for a well-known company, all right? We're not looking down at the, the little sort of, you know, the little penny stocks, okay? We want it to actually be trading at over $5 in price, and we want it to be trading at least one and a half million shares a day. We want it to, to be a, you know, a liquid stock that we can get in and out of easily. We also would like price to be above the 200 period moving average, all right? We want the stock to be trending up, and remember what we're saying, 20 above the 50 and the 50 to be trending up as well. So this was uh, Netflix here back in the day when it was a uh, beautiful stock. Okay, <clears throat> and what we had, you know, those periods, price was above the 20 period moving average, which is the blue. The 20 was above the 50. And also what we can see, the red 50 was basically effectively, it was sloping up as well. So you know, we've done part one in understanding the overall big market. Now we're here to look at the individual stock, okay? And these are the filters we want to be able to see in order to give us the opportunity to basically sort of, you know, to, to take a trade in line with what is the strongest trend at that time. And here's part three, our trigger to action. Okay, so we've, you know, we've done part one, look at the overall market. Part two, look at the individual stock. Part three, what's my trigger? Okay, what do I need to do to get into this trade? So what we're looking to do here is we buy the stock that bounces off or retakes the 50 period moving average. Okay, and what that means is that is where price goes back above the 50 period moving average after dipping below it. Okay, that's the that's the important thing. And and here's a, a little a little nugget. Okay, that um, I have found very helpful as well is that what we will call the trader's edge. Is that what we want to do is, is buy on the day between about 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is normally around about it's normally normally around about 8 to 9 p.m. UK time. All right. Why is that? It's because most of the trading day has, has been done. So you're less likely to get a false move in that stock. And, and what you will also find, especially with stocks, is that you are already in the position should it gap up and away from you the next day. All right. That is that can be important. That can make a big difference, okay? Because you want to be trying to catch these stocks that are coming into new trends, okay? Or the dominant trend is re-exerting itself, and you want to be in a position to ride that as much as you possibly can. So, excuse me. So what we have here is, as I said, this was the Netflix daily. <clears throat> yeah, I've been above, and what we saw is here price came down and it bounced off the 50 period moving average. Here, price opened beneath it, but actually closed above it. That is retaken the 50 period moving average. That's a buy. The next day is a rejection candle. That's a buy. The next a couple of days later, what we have is a bullish inside bar where price opens beneath the 50, but it closes back above the 50. That's a buy. A few days later, price comes back and retraces back to the 50 period moving average. What does it do? Puts in a bullish rejection candle. That's a buy. What we see is, you know, it rallies away strongly. It then basically comes back to the 50. What does it do? Puts in a small little bullish candle. That's a buy. We go back up. A couple of days later, we get another small little bullish candle. That's a buy before it sprints away. So, you know, when you get a good stock and a good trend, there might well be quite a few opportunities for you to get on board. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we want to be able to do to join basically strong trade, strong stocks in a good trend. That's what we're looking to try and achieve. You know, and as I said, I appreciate that, you know, if you look at the stock market right today, you know, there's not that many opportunities to, to get into to buy. 
but that's fine okay part of this is about you being able to look at this you can practice this you can study this so that when those markets turn which they will because they always do you're in a position to basically you know make the most of it when those opportunities reassert themselves so here's part four which is all about trade management okay trade management so what we have is we know, okay, from every session I've ever done here, we never ever trade without a stop loss. We never trade without a stop loss. The stop loss gets placed beneath the recent low, all right, especially when you're like today buying stocks. We also have position size, all right? Position size is all about managing risk. Managing risk is your first job as a trader. You know, the way you manage risk is you basically never trade without a stop loss. You only ever risk a small portion of your account on one of your trades, right? What we suggest is position size for one percent of your trade capital. That's the that's the thing, okay? To be able to to do that, and that's one thing. And what you will find is if you want more insight into that risk management, you will find that there is quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of those videos uh, in the Admiral channel will touch upon risk management, okay? For myself and my colleagues. So, you know, if you're still struggling to understand risk management, my suggestion is before you put any more trades on, go away, watch those, okay, so, so that you clearly understand what you, what's required from you in terms of risk management. Uh, Vincenzo has uh, put in a fantastic comment there. Money management is even more important than the strategy itself. He's absolutely spot on. Nice work, Vincenzo. That's, you know, you're absolutely right on the money there, okay? That's that's what we need to do as, a, uh, uh, as traders. So, stop loss beneath the recent low, position size for only 1%. The stop is not moved for the first tra 10 trading days. This is something that traders can struggle with because they want to interfere. OK, they want to interfere. They want to basically meddle. They want to they want to sort of think that they can actually make a difference. But what you do is once that trade is in, it is not moved for 10 trading days. Right. And the whole reason is to let you stay with the trade. What happens then is then you just trail behind obvious swing points okay obvious swing points when you see that as a trade moves and as i said be prepared to re-attack and to add positions even in that netflix opportunity there was like one two three four five six you know over that kind of three to four month period there were seven trades that set up there just in netflix alone in that time okay so be prepared to use it in terms of targeting well you know what i like to use is a thing called consistent targeting this is where i will use fibonacci and very often I'll use the, the 423 Fibonacci expansion, okay, or extension there, and, you know, just by using that tool, drawing it over the, uh, uh, over the, the sort of the trigger candle, and then my target would be 423 Fibonacci extension. However, if you just want to even just use simple, to, sim even simpler targeting, uh, you know, I would suggest that you aim for a 4R, okay, for reward to risk for your trades, okay. I'm not suggesting you'll catch that every time, but as a target, it is a good place for you to uh, a good place for you to start, ladies and gentlemen. So, part four, trade management, very key, very important. So, you know, it, it, listen, let's have a little look at this Netflix example here, okay. So we have, you know, the S and P five hundred, the weekly chart was sloping up at that particular time. The Netflix daily chart was trending up. It was above the 200 period moving average. The 50 MA was sloping up, as you can see there in the red. Price returned to the 50, okay. Bounced five times between May and June, and then it returned again for two trades in August. So, you know, as we said, just went through before, there's a couple there, okay, a couple there, five times there, and then a couple of times later on, okay, in the summer. And that's what can happen, you know good stocks and good trends we want to be able to capture a part of that that's what we're particularly looking for something that we can work with and it is quite simple and as i said you just utilize these moving averages to help you here's uh, an example from alphabet or you know most of you know it as google all right so the s p at the time the s p 500 weekly chart was sloping up the uh, google daily chart was also trending up it was above its 200 period moving average, which we can see there. That's the green there. The 50 period moving average was sloping up as well. Hopefully, you can see that there. First opportunity, okay, was you know October, uh, October 20, okay, when basically it reclaimed, okay, it reclaimed the 50. And then what we can see is it kept coming back. That one will have failed, but that one took off there, okay. Uh, uh, and then invariably it kept coming back kept coming back to the 50 and bouncing off it before it moved, okay, before it moved. And, and for that, over that kind of six-month period, six, seven-month period, you know, just in Google, you had 
eight trades, seven wins and one loss. Okay, that's you know, that's great trading. Okay, and you know, not terribly, you know, because you're only doing it on the daily chart, doesn't mean you have to be sat there all day, every day. Once the trade is on, remember, you're not touching it for the first 10 days, so you don't need to sit there all the time or do it. This is something that can actually suit you as a, you know, if you're a part-time trader trading around your day job, that's what can actually help you. Next example, okay, Facebook, all right? Facebook or Meta as they're, they're known these days, aren't they, and stuff. So first one, S&P 500, the weekly chart is sloping up. The daily chart is trending up. It is above the 200 period moving average, which you can see down here. The 50 period moving average, okay, is sloping up. And, you know, here what we see is, okay, you know, we're seeing is opportunities. We probably maybe that was probably a bit too missed out there in terms of the May one, but what we can see is price comes back here, doesn't it? It bounces off it, okay, in mid-July, right before it runs very nicely. And the second opportunity, okay, it bounced off it there, okay, at the 50 period moving average before it ran again there. So, you know, just a couple of of uh, a couple of examples there, right? Just a couple of opportunities. And, and you know, this is here's a good opportunity for me to show is, you know, I said earlier about, um, you know, the trader's edge is buying between, you know, between three to four, okay, in the US stock market, which is around about eight to nine in the UK, depending on British summertime, et cetera. And, um, you, know, you know, it's around that, okay? Uh, which means that, you know, you are in the trade the next day. So for example, here, you can see that, that you know, we'd have already been long, We've already been long here, okay. But, but just for example, you know, if you're buying there or had thought this is a bullish move, okay, I'm going to buy the next day. Well, actually, what happens is you can see it opens up. There's a big gap there, okay. There's a big gap there. So you getting in just before, you know, before the U.S. market closes means that you're already long when you get gaps like that to to, to help you, okay. So that's that's why we have that kind of little additional sort of rule to help you. Um, examples of uh, Microsoft here, okay, S&P 500 weekly chart was sloping up. The daily chart on Microsoft was trending up as well. Uh, it was above the 200 period moving average, which is this one here, okay. 50 period moving average was sloping up, okay, sloping up there. First opportunity was in kind of a, a early January, which what actually happened here is, you know, price was above, it came back down to the 50. That day it closed, but the next day what happened is it opened beneath the 50, but it closed, okay, and reclaimed it. Remember what we're saying is, okay, we stop loss is beneath the recent low, which means you'd be beneath this recent low here. So you don't touch it for 10 days. And you know, when you're watching that, you're probably very nervous. You're probably thinking, oh, Lordy, Lordy, you know, I've got my trade in here, okay. It's not working. And then what we see is warmth, off it goes. And this is one of a perfect example why once your trade is on, you're not, you're not touching it for the first 10 trading days, okay? Just let the trade play out. It either flies or it dies. That's the way it does. And when it comes back, okay, later, okay, what we see is closes beneath the 50, and then it reclaims it, okay? And we're looking to buy that, okay? We'll stop beneath the low. We've got 10 days of watching it sort of just maneuver before it takes off, okay? Before it takes off. And, and, you know, and there were, you know, opportunities there, okay? That's, that's, what we're, that's what we're particularly looking at and interested in. So um, those of you who know me will know that, you know, I always like to give you a little bit of homework to take away to work on. So your homework here for the first session is go through your favorite stocks, okay? Maybe you've just been following, I don't know, maybe the FANG stock, maybe you're just following some of the tech stocks, maybe you're following, you know, what, whatever that, those stocks may be, maybe it's ABH, maybe whatever it takes your fancy, okay? But just go through your favorite stocks. Just take a little bit of time, okay? Maybe just go through some of the big stocks, okay, on the American indexes. You know, and uh, look at that, you know, establish what was the overall index in? What was the S&P 500 weekly chart doing that? Then have a look at, you know, stocks and say, well, actually, how did price react to the 50 period moving average? You know, as I said, lots of traders will use the 50 period moving average as an area of fair value. All right. And so when price comes back to it, it's not unsurprising for it to see it bounce. That is actually enormously helpful. OK, the question is, did it provide opportunity for it? And if so, how far did those trades run? Did they run? And were they capable of giving you plus four R wins? Maybe some of them went even further. Maybe some of them only go two, three R, okay? That's, what you, that's why you do this little bit of homework. That's why you do this little bit of study to understand what the opportunities are in terms of the way those trades move, okay? That's what we particularly look at. 
So there's a bit of homework there for you to take away, a little bit for you to, 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 to look at, as I say. Just, uh, um, but you know, that's the thing, just going and doing a bit of homework over the weekend, all right, just taking a look. That's the thing that will actually help you become a better trader, just taking a bit of time to do a little bit of, little bit of research, a little bit of work on that to, to sort of make sure that you uh, make sure that you understand this, okay? Make sure, you know, you can work with it. And remember what we also said is, you know, this, this recording is video. So what will happen is it will go onto the YouTube channel and you'll be able to watch it again, all right? And remember, this is part one, we're focusing on going long at stocks. In part two, we'll focus on shorting and other instrument classes. Okay, so be sure to uh, keep an eye out for that when that comes on to, to be able to uh, to be able to understand the uh, uh, to be able to understand the the other side of the market so that um, you can make the most. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, many people use moving averages for their trading because they're simple to interpret and they're visual. Or again, it's a very simple clue. We just use the 20, the 50, and the 200 simple moving averages because they've become a self-fulfilling prophecy, all right? They become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, we, it gives you enough information to be able to make that decision. In particular, we like to focus on the 50-day moving average because it acts as fair value, which we can use to our advantage, right? And that forms a simple plan for buying well-known stocks in a good trend. And all of those can be traded through the Admiral's MT4 and MT5 platforms, which is good for us to know. So um, what we'll do is, you know, if uh, we'll have a quick look, we've got a couple of minutes left, we'll have a little quick look at the, uh, at, the, at the charts. What we'll also say is that, you know, if you want to get in touch with us, okay, you can look at the website, admiralmarkets.com, or, you know, what you can do is you can contact us, email global at Marketing. And then you can see there is a wide range of social media ways to interact with us, depending upon your preferred one, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Instagram, Twitter, okay, you name it, we're there. And our social media team will be on there, okay, and be able to sort of help you with any particular, uh, um, uh, any particular options. So Adir is asked, can we use the 50 period moving average for trading currency? Absolutely. Again, I do that myself. And in part two, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on, you know, A, looking at shorts, but B, looking at different instruments, uh, different asset classes, sorry. So FX currencies, okay, indices, uh, commodities, crypto, et cetera. So I say, keep an eye out. I'll probably do it in, a, in probably early September, all right? But just uh, keep an eye out for those particular sessions, that particular part two, so you can actually get the, uh, get the most out of, uh, out, of these two, uh, out of these two sessions. But thank you for the question, good question. Dick. So, as I said, we've got a couple of minutes left, so just bear with us. What we'll do is we'll switch across to the charts, all right, and just have a little look at one or two of things that have happened uh, and be able to sort of identify that just to help sort of, you know, just uh, lock in what we've actually talked about today. So just uh, bear with us a second, ladies and gentlemen. Show this back on. Oh. Super. So I'm hoping that you can see my uh, um, uh, uh, slides, or oh, rather my chart. Sorry. I hope you can still hear and see me. And this is Tesla on the daily chart back uh, back last summer. Okay. And um, you know what I just wanted to, to talk and show about is that uh, is that you know. Um, at that time, the, the S&P 500 was quite happily chugging its way up on the weekly. Tesla was, you know, was, was loved by everybody. Uh, and what we started to see in uh, kind of July was that basically the 50 period moving average started to, to slope its way up. And what we had here was, you know, we had quite a few clear bounces, okay, off the 50 period moving average. Uh, you know, and as I said, price would, you know, bounce its way, you know, bounce its way, okay. And, and as I said, Yes, I appreciate that um, uh, Tesla and most stocks are in a downtrend at the moment. That's why I'm saying in session two, we will look at that in particular. Uh, but I wanted to just be able to show now that pretty much all stocks, okay, once they're in a good trend, they will come back to that 50 period moving average and they will bounce off it, okay. And if you're in a position to just, you know, have a little checklist, okay, work your way through it or through those stocks, okay, when they're in those good trends, then basically you have the opportunity to sort of, you know, get on board and sort of just take a couple of very, very nice, simple trades that you just let them play out for you.
So uh, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as always, we run out of time. I, I try to fit in as much as I can. You know, and I appreciate it. Sometimes we go a little bit quick because I want to share with you as often as I can. But remember, this is recorded and it will go onto the YouTube channel. All right. OK. And be able to sort of uh, um, uh, be able to watch this time and time again. Get yourself a notebook, take some notes. OK, go and have a little look at some uh, particular uh, examples there. So um, uh, as always, all right, I, I, you know, I'll just uh, take a question before I just finish there is that uh, uh, here you go. Uh, Andros asks, what does the mean stop not move for the first 10 days? It that basically means once that trade is on and triggered is that you do not do anything to it for the first 10 days. Just leave it. OK, just leave it after 10 trading days. Well, then you can start to sort of, you know, maybe the maybe the trade will have hit your stop loss. That's possible. Maybe the trade will have shot off again, okay, hit your target. That's possible. Or maybe the trade is just, you know, chugging away. And what you'll be able to do is then move your stop loss. OK, you'll trail your stop loss uh, to to take that trade okay to sort of just manage that particular trade i hope that uh hope that works for you uh, Yanis, great to see you again okay have a nice weekend uh Osman, you're very very welcome thanks for joining us here so as always um you know just before i uh, finish up remember there'll be a feedback form that will come to you just after this session closes. we'd really appreciate it just take you know the 30 seconds just to tap it in fill it in okay we appreciate all the feedback it does uh help us uh, and as always, okay, I, uh, I, you know, just, you know, for me to finish up to say that I wish you all the best of success in your own trading endeavors. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Trade well, everybody. Cheers.